Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's episode, I wanna begin by asking you a question. I'm gonna show you two versions of the same Excel report and I'm gonna ask you which one do you trust more? Which one do you feel like you can look at and trust the information that is being displayed on the report? So. The report is for the product shipments made in November 2019. And this is the one version of the report. And then another version looks like this. So I'm gonna flip back. But notice that the header of the columns have a different size than this table here. They're bigger in size as well as the highlight of the column uh, for the header and the footer, making it easier for the reader to know what's going on quickly rather than this report here, which might take you a few seconds to realize what's going on. So you wanna make it easy for the reader to know what's in the schedule. The second thing you quickly notice is that if you click with the mouse on any of the numbers shown in the schedule, you'll see that it's formula driven. There is a summary formula that is bringing in and these values from the shipment schedule versus this summary here if you click in any of the numbers you'll find that they are just hard-coded numbers which also gives you less comfort that this schedule is correct versus this schedule here when you look at it and it's all formula driven it gives you much more comfort and trust in this report so in today's video i want to share with you eight tips based on my experience as a financial controller on small subtle changes you can do to your excel report that can make it easier on the reader to trust the information that is displayed on the report Report. And the reader could be anyone, could be investors, client, management, or whoever is using this financial data. Some of the tips that I'm gonna share here might be things you already know, things that are obvious, but if anything, it's gonna be a validation and a confirmation of the things you already know. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. My first tip is to use formatting to make the file easy for the reader visually to understand what's going on. So look at this file here. I use a different color for the header of each column and a different color for the footer so that when I look at this visually quickly, I know what's going on because most readers of financial information have very little time and they see, quite frankly, tens of financial reports in a daily basis. So when they look at something, they wanna spend quickly a few seconds to understand what's going on in this report versus if you look at the other version of this, it doesn't have any, any kind of formatting to indicate the column uh, header versus the footer. Um, it makes it harder for the reader versus this one makes it very easy. So what did I change here? Well, I only changed the size of the font on the header and I changed the color highlights as well as for the uh, footer. And this is very quick and easy change you can make to make your report just quickly, easy for the reader to understand what's going on. Tip number two is to name all your tabs. So notice here that I have a tab called Sheet 2. You never wanna have a tab without a name. So this one should be named whatever is in this tab. So this tab is actually Warehouse Shipments. So what I should do is I should change the name from Sheet 2 to Shipments or Warehouse Shipments for the reader. When they open the file, they will know what's going on in each tab versus if it says Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3, this is not gonna convey confidence. So you wanna call it what it is. Also, while you're here, you wanna give a summary tab always. So you wanna begin all your files with a summary tab. This way the reader can open the file and begin with the summary. And then after that, they can dig into the detail, but at least the summary will give them a quick understanding of what's happening in the file. So my recommendation is to always have a summary tab at the beginning of each file. Tip number three is that all the numbers you're displaying in your file will have much more credibility if they are formula driven values, right? So right here I have, when you click with the mouse on any of these numbers, you'll find that I have a sum of formula that is bringing in the values from the shipments tab, right? Uh, compare this to another version of the same report that when you click with the mouse on any of the numbers, you find that it's just hard-coded numbers, right? This doesn't give me enough trust in the file when I look at it because this is subject to somebody, uh, quite honestly, fat fingering and entering the wrong value versus when you go back to the other summary, when I am clicking with my mouse on any of these numbers and I find that it's uh, formula-driven, I feel much more comfortable with the numbers that are being displayed here. Tip number four is whenever possible to list the source of the information that you got this data from. This gives the reader of the information much more trust in the data you're showing because you're showing where you got it from, right? You're holding yourself up to accountability by showing the source, right? So in this case here, this is a shipment uh, summary and I got the report from an SAP report and the report name. It's always a good idea to mention the report name so that if the reader want to replicate your work, 
they can go and get it themselves from SAP, right? This is showing that you are accountable for the data you're showing, that if somebody wants to audit you, they can go and get it themselves. So report name uh, shipped by customer is the name of the report in SAP. So whenever possible, show the source of the information. Tip number five is to always add a name at the beginning of each report that you're showing. And this might be obvious to a lot of you, but there are many times where I've seen reports that doesn't have a name to tell me what I'm looking at. So for this report here, imagine if I remove this name right now, it says product shipments in November 2019. Imagine if I remove that, right? And now you're looking at this report it will be much more harder for me to understand what's going on. I will understand it in a few seconds, but if you leave the name in there, it will just make it much easier for me to understand what I'm looking at. Again, I look at tens of reports daily, and I wanna make it easy on myself and on my reader to understand what's going on. So always have a name on the report that shows what's going on in this report. Tip number six is to always include a header name for each column in your file. Imagine looking at a file like this, and this is a product shipment in November 2019. You know that these are a shipped product to each of these customers, and you know that most likely each of these values are quantities, but you never want to leave this still here blank. You always want to include quantity in here so that when the reader is looking at this they don't spend time guessing what's happening so imagine looking at this without any name in it it will be quite confusing but if you include the name it's just an easy thing to do that makes it easy for everyone to understand the report tip number seven is whenever possible is to add a value check formula at the bottom of your sheet so if you have a quantity driven report or a dollar amount driven report it's a good idea to compare the total you're showing here to the total from the source so this tab here is pulling using a summary formula pulling in the quantity from the shipments tab so the total here is 161,000 and it's always a good idea to create a check here that checks the total of 161,000 against the total shipments from the shipments tab so you can easily achieve that by saying um, equals c17 which is uh, this cell here 161,000 minus the sum of all the shipments and the tab shipments So this way you're adding a level of accountability so that when the reader is looking at this uh, They'll notice that you did your diligence in comparing your totals in the summary to the source of the data and finally, tip number eight is when you're done working on the report and it's ready to be shipped to the reader of the information, take a step back and put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself, what did they ask me for versus what am I giving them? So in this case here, imagine the manager asked the employee for a product shipment uh, in November 2019 by customer. So now take a step back and look at it and ask yourself, am I giving them what they want? This is really important, right? So if they're asking for quantity by customer, you look at this and you say, okay, this shows the quantity by customer. If I am the manager and I'm looking at this, I am getting what I asked for. And this is really important because a lot of times uh, you will get lost in the weeds and what you give back to the manager or the investor is different than what they asked for. In many cases, what I do is I go back to the email where they asked me for the information and read it again and make sure that what I'm giving them is exactly what they asked for. I'm gonna make this file available for download with all of the tips that we share today and it's gonna be available on Patreon for my Patreon supporters. Go ahead and check it out in the link down below. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up and if you can share it with any friend or coworker who might benefit from it, go ahead and do so and I'll see you in the next video. Also, if you want to learn more from me, you can check out my online courses on various topics, including financial metrics or KPIs, creating a KPI dashboard, accounting interview skills, etc., etc. You could also chat directly with me and ask me your questions if you become a member on Patreon.